Kombucha's been around for thousands of years, yet only recently has it gained mainstream popularity. Today you can find a variety of companies advertising unique flavors while bloggers and TV personnel boast about its health benefits. I, however, am going to take a slightly different path to discuss with you the science behind kombucha and the process that allows it to make it to your lips. What is kombucha? Kombucha is made by adding a culture of yeast and bacteria to a sweet tea and allowing it to ferment. The symbiotic yeast and bacteria culture, more commonly known as a SCOBY, is circular, mushroom-like, and gelatinous in texture. The SCOBY is a biofilm composed of bacterial cellulose, shown in the lower left, is a microscope close-up of the nanofibers, which maintains the culture's structure and flexibility. The most common species of yeast are of the Candidia genus, and their role is to aerobically ferment sugars within the tea to create alcohol. Gram-negative bacteria such as glucoacetobacter and lactobacillus are able to oxidize the fermented ethanol into acetic acid and CO2. The acetic acid is a component of vinegar which can overpower your kombucha if you allow it to ferment too long and the CO2 is important for the carbonation, aka bubbliness, of your brew. Now that we know about the symbiosis between the yeast and bacteria making up the SCOBY, let's review the steps involved in creating the fizzy life elixir. Kombucha begins with the brewing of sweetened tea. The variety of tea can impact the depth of flavor in the kombucha. After steeping the tea and letting it cool, the kombucha and starter can be added to your brewing container. Initial fermentation. Once your brewed sweet tea, scoby, and starter is combined in your brewing vessel, it should be covered with a cheesecloth, coffee filter, or towel to prevent any unwanted critters while still allowing for adequate oxygen circulation within the brewing vessel. During the fermentation period, the vessel should remain in a warm environment, ideally within the range of 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 14 days, after which it can be harvested. Secondary fermentation is optional, but helps to develop the flavor of the kombucha through the addition of unique teas, fresh fruits, or juices. The picture presented is of my personal favorite combination, pureed fresh strawberries, frozen acai, and pineapple juice, with about two ounces added to the top of each bottle before sealing. Carbonation occurs as a result of excess CO2 trapped in a liquid. Some amounts of carbonation can make the kombucha resemble seltzer or soda by giving it a bubbly texture. However, there's always the possibility that fermenting the kombucha could result in an undesired explosion. To ensure carbonation remains in control, only secondarily ferment the kombucha for 3-7 to seven days and limit the amount of sugar and fresh fruits that you add. Whether you're a skeptic grossed out by the slimy scoby or are already a kombucha lover, I hope you are intrigued by the science and symbiosis that allow for the formation of this miraculous drink.